Okay, good morning to tribe. It's the next day and uh, we stopped filming yesterday was uh, was getting dark and well the truth is that we had to hurry up because the restaurant was closing and we were hungry. <laughs> I wanted to come back just a little bit on what happened, what we decided to try early early last night. So as we all know, it's darker on one side. It, it was the same as today. We're going to the same place actually. So the sun is there. And over there, it's much darker when you're starting to shoot at the blue hour. And that was the intention just to, to figure out how long of a difference it was between one side to the other before it was ready for the light meeting with the tubes that I had. And the answer is 15 minutes. Yeah, so with the conditions that we had, meaning there were no clouds at all, at all, there were no clouds at all, and we know that obviously the side of the sun is much brighter than the, other, than the opposite. We gained about 15 minutes of shooting time by beginning on the opposite side of the sunset. Um, so the, the sunset, the sun was setting at 546 and our first shot was at 605 which is near the end of the civil twilight and then we switched side and it was still way too early to shoot in that direction and we ended up doing our first decent shot at 618 so basically about 15 minutes difference and probably more because we didn't we didn't use the same uh, tube, so if we would have used our milky white tube, which is the brightest we have um, on the opposite side of the sunset, we probably could have gained a few more minutes. Uh, but then, like, it was mainly to show that the technique of it, that it is possible, but the results are not the one we prefer because since there, there were no clouds at all in front of the, like to cover the sun, there was way too much light on the subject for our taste at least. Um, so yeah, those shots were, will not, uh, these are not our favorites obviously, but, uh, but it works. So to practice or to gain a few more time, it's good. And, but if there are clouds, then the light is, much softer on the subject and this is really nice so. yeah wet clouds then absolutely do it shoot against the sunset it's gonna be great this is an example the first time we ever tried that it's kind of a miracle we didn't even know but it worked well so so now we were looking for that sometimes but as you can see today no clouds, no clouds. <laughs> and Especially when there are no clouds or almost no clouds, we never shoot in between. Eric never sh never shoots in between, like. Um, okay, so the, so the in between would be like this is the the sun right there. This is opposite to the sunset, so in between would be there. So as you can see, there's a gradient over there. I'm usually trying to avoid that. Sometimes it's, you have to play with what you have, but normally I would use the sun and put him just on one side, but the glow of the sunset would be in the frame. This is harder to work with. This is great if you have clouds. <laughs> yeah, as he said, if you don't have a lot of options, then you know you make the best out of what you have, obviously. But if we have the choice, we avoid that just because it's much harder for him to find a nice composition with that gradient of colors in the sky. Okay, that's a good way to explain things, Kim. <laughs> oh, we're going back to the same spot today. It's a beautiful one hour walk to the end, the end of the beach where there's no one and we can have that flat area with the reflection where Kim is dancing. This is so beautiful. We're still on Mosquito Island, but no mosquitoes this time. Quite happy about that. 
Okay, enough, enough talking. Bye. <laughs>